this. So good evening. It is 7.04 p.m. Um, and I'd like to call uh, this meeting of the National Board of Education to order. Uh, it's Wednesday, December 18th, 2019, and we're in the uh, Nashua North boardroom. Uh, Mr. Corino, could you please call the roll? Ms. Oden? Here. Here. Ms. Raymond? Here. Mr. Kaufman? Here. Mr. Mosher? I'm here. Are you by yourself tonight, Mr. Mosher? Sir, I sure am. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Twyver? Here. Mr. Garino is here. Ms. Hohensey? Here. Ms. Timmons? Here. Ms. Porter? Here. Jamila Ashanti Scales? Present. George Ede? Here. Uh, also attending, we have Dr. Mosley. Uh, Dr. McKinney? Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. And Ms. Ms. O'Gara? Here. And we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Gorino. Um, if you could please lead us in the prayer. And then, Mr. Ede, could you do um, the Pledge of Allegiance? I just want to uh, note that participation in the recitation of the prayer is voluntary. The National Board of Education does not condone or advocate for any specific religion or for any religion. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty of managing the educational institutions of our beloved city. In our common endeavors, may we find a spirit of unity and understanding which will enable us to face our multiple problems with an objective mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you all. All right, this evening we are going to start um, with a presentation uh, by Ms. Hines and Mr. Harvey regarding the district's new website, which will be rolled out next month. Yes. So, yay. Um, Dr. McKinney, could you please? Cut the lights. Yay, thank you. Hey, you did right. Hi, uh, thank you very much. Yes, I'm Stacy Hines, Director of Communications, and I'm here with Ian Harvey, who is the System Administrator with our Department of Technology. And we're here to give you a preview of, I, be I believe, if memory serves me correct, I think the fifth redesign of Nashua.edu. And we are planning on launching in mid-January, and our goal for this project, um, as with any redesign, is obviously to make sure that um, the content, and it's all about the content on the website, is current and, and timely. Um, marketing is important too, so we have developed uh, this redesign with some very, um, initially very engaging um, multimedia visual as you open the site. Um, we think there's a clearer navigation, as with any redesign, you always want to make it a little bit easier and for your user. Um, Keeping branding consistent was very important. We are redesigning not only the Nashua.edu, but all 17 school websites. And also making it more mobile friendly. Um, six years ago when we did the redesign, uh, responsive design was a part of the project, but because of budget constraints, um, it, it, the entire site was not um, mobile friendly. So um, right now, I think I'm going to turn it over to Ian, who can take us through um, some of the more uh, technical upgrades to the website, as well as a bit of the reorganization of the content. And specifically, we wanted to show you the uh, Board of Ed pages as well. Uh, thank you, Stacy. As Stacy mentioned, I'm Ian Harvey. I'm a systems administrator in the technology department. Stacy and I have been working together to, to build this new website. So I'll open it up. Um, so when any member of the public logs in to the website, or I guess really goes to the website, this is what they're gonna see, or something similar. So the images that we see here are a rotating banner currently, and it has the ability to be a streaming video. Um, you can see we kind of have narrowed down our, our what they call channels, so our, our navigation bar at the top. 
and we've also added these global icons here. This was done through the use of Google Analytics on our current website. The idea was let's take the most popular pages people are going to and let's make it easier for them to access them. Um, so something that this website also has is the ability to create a staff intranet. And what I mean by that is staff members can sign in and they'll be able to access you know, sensitive things or basically things that maybe public members don't necessarily need. So for example, certain links to um, kind of staff such as Kronos, ESS, things of that nature. So I'm going to sign in here just so you can see. You might notice a slight difference. I'm going to sign in. I apologize for my lengthy password. <laughs> uh, so you can see now we have the addition of the staff tab. And this is, the idea was allowing only staff members to see it cuts down on, on what members of the public need to see. Um, so I'm going to sign into the back because of what I want to talk about quickly is ADA compliance. And that's a big piece of this website is the idea for everyone to be able to use it, not just you know a section of us. Um, so regardless of kind of your abilities or disabilities, you need to be able to access this website, and that's done through site structure and um, you know, making sure that, that you have proper headings to make sure that your images have proper alternate text. Um, one item that this website comes with is this Ally Accessibility Report, and it basically is a live scan of the website at all times and tells us kind of you know, what we can do to, to improve this, the website accessibility. So if I click on it, it kind of gives us you know, some visualizations on, on our improvement, um, hopefully improvement, rather I hope it doesn't um, go down. But it also will give us kind of little hints on how to fix these things so we can always make sure that our website kind of is constantly striving to be able to be accessed by anyone. Um, I also did want to show you the, the Board of Education pages. I know that's why we're all here. Um, so when you look at the Board of Education pages, we have kind of, you know, similar setup to what we have now. We have our meeting minutes, we have our calendar, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, the current calendar that matches. Mm -hmm. We have our budget info, policies and procedures can be set up, um, and I can show you quickly those be set up in a nature similar to this. So for our meeting minutes, so we have it so we can look at by date and we can expand that open. And we have currently the agenda approved minutes, but we can also link the videos, which we plan to do. Um, we also want to show you one of the current headaches of our, of our website now is the ability to search in the meeting minutes. So what we've done is we've actually kind of taken advantage of Google Drives. And what this does is it gives you a much better search. So I'll, I'm going to show you a quick example. Um, actually, I don't want to search in there. What I want to do is I'm going to go to my... Uh, yeah. So if I search in this Board of Education folder, so right now, if I was to look up the word science, it's going to give me all the documents that contain that word in there. And I believe it's going to be something like 90, but we can, my heart. We can prove it um, if I select all of them. Oh, and there's 80. I apologize. Now if I do science teacher, what happens on our current website is if you type in a word like this, where two separate words, it gives you all of the occasions of science and all of the occasions of teacher, but they don't necessarily have to be in the document together. What this is the Google Smart Search is it actually forces, so now the word science and teacher both have to be in the document, and you can see that it's going to be a little bit less, and I can actually improve this even more. So if I put quotations around this and force it to be science teacher exactly, now we only get four. So in all of those four documents, the word science teacher will appear together. Um, so using the Google Analytics and using the Google, oh, using the Google Drive, um, the search functionality of our meeting minutes is going to vastly improve. And I believe that's kind of the quick sneak peek. Oh, yeah, we can talk about the analytics a little more. So as I was saying, when we designed the, the new website, the idea was to use, you know, make sure that we were giving people access to things as quickly as possible. And, and as I stated, that was done through Google Analytics, and we actually sent out a survey, and it was, on the, it was on the current website for a time. And using the results of both of those, we've kind of come up with these are the most important. Um, overwhelmingly, lunch menus, number one. Um, <laughs> That honestly, not as a parent, surprised me, but that is the case. Uh, followed by X2, the staff directory, um, calendars. And then right now what we have is we actually have like these 
extra, so we can actually rotate these through. So right now, the middle school project is such a pertinent topic, so we can lose a global icon on it, but at a time, eventually, it may not be so pertinent, we can remove it and change it to something that's kind of more necessary at the time. Um, yeah, so we have lunch menus. We have the X2 info, or X2, actually, I should remove the word info. Uh, we have our staff directory. We have our calendars. We have our middle school project, see something, say something. We have our strategic plan. And this is actually um, our translator. So we can use Google Translate and choose any of these languages. Um, so if I was to do, let's do Spanish, and it's just like that. So now when I scroll down, all these descriptions are, are automatically translated. That's really um, great. So the idea is, you know, let's, let's make this usable for everyone. Let's, I guess, give everyone the opportunity. Um, con content management um, it was something we discussed a lot about. And um, so we've been pleasantly surprised by how many people have really embraced the idea of becoming content managers and webmasters. Um, so we have a group of about 22 webmasters who we're going to be working with. Again, for that goal of keeping our content um, accurate and, and with timely updates. So, um, in fact, we're meeting tomorrow with uh, Jackie Waters again, uh, your secretary, and uh, Tara Kinsella and Gabrielle Vernacchio um, to again address and, and keep working on the um, Board of Ed pages. So, so thank you. We're really looking forward to this. Um, it's we've got a lot more work ahead, but. Fortunately, it's going to be a quiet week over the next few weeks, and this is going to be our focus. So we'll be ready for mid-January. Mid Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hines oh. and Mr. Harvey. Oh, oh go ahead. I, apologize. I, just, I just wanted to kind of show one more kind of functionality of this website that our current one lacks, is the ability to create emergency alerts. Now, currently, on, for things such as a snow day, when you go onto the district website, you have a red ticker at the top. Um, so I'm going to show you quickly what this website has a functionality to do which I believe is much better. Um, so I'm going to say today. I'm going to save and display. So now when I go to the website, I'll do it this way. I get hit with this. So if it's a snow day, it's going to say snow day. You can put whatever text in you want. And you can't get rid of it until you say, OK, I got it. So you have to acknowledge that you've seen it. And even then, it lives down here. So if at some point in the middle of your website search, you forget what the alert was, it's still there. Um, so yeah, I just, that was another piece I just wanted to show you quickly. But yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. That is very interesting. Um, Ms. Van Twyver, you had your hand up. I did, thank you very much. Um, the authoring tool that we used on the previous website has changed. It's not the same one, I agree, I understand. Is that correct? Right, Cur the current site is uh, Kentico software, Kentico. and this is Blackboard, which um, we have, we're very familiar with because it's been um, our, uses our mass communication system for quite a few years now. So um, that software render these pictures appropriately for every platform, like uh, an iPad or? Yes. It does, yes. and you've tested that out so far? Correct, I can even show you quickly um, here if I just shrink this down. We work on a telephone too? Yes. Yep, if I shrink this down, telephone. it's um, it's, resp it's completely responsive. And this works for the whole site. So no matter what page you're on, mm -hmm. the site will, will, will bend it and flex to, to the screen. And also something quickly I, want, I should add is once this website launch, we're actually gonna be beginning work on a mobile application that partners with this website. And what the mobile app will be able to do is, is parents and, and students will be able to download this application and tell this application, you know, this is the schools I want information from. And so it will take information from this website and aggregate it onto their application or their, for their mobile phone for them. So they don't have to, you know, do search through all these different schools. They can get just the schools that they want and need. So if I'm a parent and I have a child at Maine Dunstable and at Elm Street in South, Bang, I can just focus on those three schools and get the information. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask what happened. Um, you're not using the previous logo, the A+. Um, this was part of the uh, design process with um, Blackboard Connect. We uh, 
worked with some of her intensely for quite a few weeks. She was great and uh, very, uh, very creative. And um, yeah, it, it was um, great having that service. This was, you know, I, I know you're remembering from six years ago, uh, the company yes. that we used was really more like a boutique company. And, and, and um, really it was like from soup to nuts, you know, design was from the ground up. You know, Blackboard is um, a major company, so it's a co big corporate company, a little different approach, a lot of resources. Um, they have worked to, um, they've been very successful and, and are the, the choice of a lot of school districts, so they have that kind of wealth of information and really... Um, well, I'm very impressed that they have a text search function. That, that was one of our priorities. You know, we were always frustrated. I mean, the search yeah. didn't didn't work. So that what was about training for the uh, website people? We have already had three three trainings, and now we're really just breaking it down to to sort of individual uh, groups. We also have uh, going to be having on the February um, PD day, President's PD day. We're going to have uh, website training. Uh, Ian and I are working to be sure that all the sites, all 18 sites, are all ready for the launch and uh, are, are going to be supporting the webmasters. You know, it's, it is a learning curve, some, some greater for others, um, some well, than others, and so we'll make sure that they have the support they need. Will each school have a different um, face on here, or they be standard? No, they will, um, you know, the, again, the branding specifically is it, there's going to be similar style, um, similar colors. I mean, Ian talked about um, ADA compliant. It, it, it was really quite amazing. Uh, we had no idea. It, it dictated every part of the development of this site, um, including choosing the colors mm -hmm. for the site, um, the style of the logo, the colors of the logo. It just, it, it was amazing. Um, and so every school has at least one webmaster, um, and uh, obviously things like the photos will be di very different. I, you'll notice with our elementary websites, they've really been stripped down to, because there's, they only have so much uh, time. And again, this goal, overriding goal of making sure the content is accurate and is timely. Um, just dictated the design of the school sites. The secondary sites are a little bit more developed. Is the authoring tool you easy to use and easy to learn? I, we've had uh, a lot of enthusiasm. They, they really feel that it is. It's very, it's very different from Kentico, um, but I, you know, the, taking people from Kentico to Blackboard has been pretty, pretty quick, pretty easy, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ventriver. Mr. Kaufman. It looks like a great job. I'm curious, is it served locally or is the vendor serving it? So this is served, it's served by the vendor. So they actually, it'll be on their uh, servers that is held there, but we own the domain. No, I just, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about backups and things like that. Oh, so the they, vendor is gonna do that. Yes. So it takes, it also means we need less machines in the future when, these kinds of things are served by the vendor, which is really what the district has to move toward. We need to get away from hosting our own X2 and things. That I just wanted to see if we were on track for that. That's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, Thank so this you. will be hosted by Blackboard. And, and I believe the daily is going to be, uh, the updates will be at least daily. So, yeah. Okay. Ms. Hohensee. Thank you. You've checked into privacy, so there's no privacy breaches, things like that, that are possible, there's security on it for student data or faculty data? Correct, yes. They, they have pretty much one of the highest levels of security that you can have regarding their staff, to, or regarding their data in general, so yes. And they are hosted, I want to say AWS, but I have to get back on that for sure. Um, but yes, their security is, is the highest standards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moser, did you have a comment or a question? I don't have any uh, questions, but I have a comment. that uh, uh, appears to me that this is uh, going to be much more flexible than, than what we're currently using. 
and uh, able to uh, offer a whole lot more uh, mobility into the uh, into the system as far as uh, the you know the data that uh, that's going to be requested. So it sounds pretty good. Thank you, Mr. Moser. Uh, any other questions or comments for Ms. Hines or Mr. Harvey? No. Seeing none, thank you so much for coming out this evening and giving us a preview. Um, I look forward to hearing uh, more about it when the launch date gets closer. Let you know. We'll definitely let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mosley, is this the only presentation needing the overhead? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. If people could bear with us for a second while we lift up the screen and I move over to the middle. Thank you for, oops, it's working. All right, thank you for your patience. The next item on our agenda um, is a recognition of our outgoing board members and our student representatives. Um, Dr. Mosley. Thank you. As typical with, you know, with new elections, there are going to be some people who are going to be transitioning um, uh, out of their positions, and there is a acknowledgement that uh, the district makes for people who have had years of service. So we kind of work from the least to the the least amount of years of service to the most. And so, with that said, we'll start with Sue Porter. Um, Sue Porter joined us two years ago uh, through a special election. Um, Sue has been part of the curriculum. Uh, evaluation committee, uh, but also was a very integral member of a strategic plan. Um, she worked with me very closely and with the steering committee and the leadership around the development of the strategic plan. Uh, she also uh, attended religiously all the focus groups and we did over 40 focus groups for the strategic plan. Sue Porter is a former teacher, retired teacher, I sense that Sue is going to continue to stay in retirement and will hang up the, the boxing gloves, so to speak, help her daughter with her law practice. Um, you maybe get something to eat at Market Basket and definitely get some sleep. So with that said, thank you, Sue Porter, for your years of service, and we appreciate all you have done for the last two years. For the National Public Schools, are you retiring or what's this happening? So is this is your second retirement? Or? My second, I'm going back to retirement. Okay, so <laughs> congratulations. Thank you very much. The next person is uh, Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman served for four years on the board. Uh, during this time, Mr. Kaufman was the board clerk his first year. Uh, also served as a as the chairperson for the budget committee. Uh, Mr. Kaufman has been an advocate for solar energy and ways to be more proficient in that endeavor. Um, Mr. Kaufman has also been very vocal and very supportive when he first joined the board uh, with the Mount Pleasant um, folks and helping them get some resources and some uh, supports. Uh, Mr. Kaufman has also been a very active member in the board. We appreciate all your years of service. Uh, we wish you well in your future's endeavor. Uh, whatever plans that you have for the future, we appreciate your service and four years on the board. So congratulations. <laughs> Ms. Doris Hohensi is the next board member. Ms. Hohensi served four years on the board. During this time, Ms. Hohensi was the chair of the policy committee. Uh, Ms. Hohensi has been instrumental in helping us uh, find uh, areas of growth in our budget process and has certainly been an active board, board member. We appreciate Ms. Hohensi's four years of service, uh, her time that she has spent with the board, uh, the constructive feedback that, that has happened at the board level, and we wish you well in your future endeavor. Thank you so much.
Elizabeth, the next recipient is Elizabeth Mantwiver. Ms. Elizabeth Mantwiver, this is her eighth year on the board. Uh, her tenure began in January of 2012 through December 2019. Ms. Van Twyver was the chair of the policy from 2014 to 2014, 2015, and 2017. She also served as board uh, clerk of the board for 2015 as well. Uh, Ms. Van Twyver has been a very active member. Um, someone who can, was very helpful for the new administration coming in and understanding and editing policy. We appreciate her eight years of service and we wish you well in your future endeavors. Congratulations. <laughs> the next person, we can't give it to this person, but this person has the most years of service. It's Mr. Mosier. Mr. Mosier, are you there? Yes, I am. We're going to have to mail it to you, but we can fake shake. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mosier has been on the board for 12 years, um, and that is the longest serving board member right now. Mr. Mosier has been very instrumental uh, in the new building project, giving us feedback on that. Um, always a person that you can call up and get feedback. He's been the historian on the board. We appreciate all his years of service. Mr. Mosier, uh, we wish you well in your future endeavors, and thank you so much for over a decade of service to the Board of Education. That's incredible, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mosley. I, I want to just add my own personal thank you to all of the outgoing board members. Um, you have all, from two years to 12 years, um, given up your evenings, um, and I know part of your daytimes, um, towards serving the children of our community. And I know that each of you has done so um, with the intention of serving the best interest of the kids here in Nashua. Um, and as a parent and as a community member, I am sincerely grateful for the time that you have given our community. So thank you. Next, we have a certificate of appreciation, National Board of Education and recognition of dedicated service to the National School District and the students extend severe appreciation, sincere appreciation to Jamila Shante Scales, National High School North. Also, Certificate of Appreciation, National Board of Education in recognition of dedicated service to the National School District and its students extend severe, sincere appreciation to George E. Natural High School South. I'd like to say something about these two students here. You guys was great the whole year. You were a delight. You were well-spoken. You were educated. You brought great information back to the board. You served your um, school very well, and I appreciate it, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Raymond? Yes, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Tara wanted me to remind the outgoing folks to take their nameplate with them when they went. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Um, I'd also, just for the, our student members of the board, I, we all, I think, are grateful to you for giving up so many long nights to be here, especially on a school night. And I know both of you um, are academics and you have sports and you have clubs and you have so many things going on in your lives. And so to give a year um, of nights here at the board level to educate us about what students need, um, it's a huge, huge undertaking. And we all sincerely appreciate the time that you have given us. Thank you very much. Okay. Seeing no other hands, uh, we will move on to our consent agenda. 
Does anyone have any items that they would like to be uh, removed from the consent agenda? Uh, seeing no hands, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Ms. Oden? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. I'll second. Oh, you second? Okay. okay. So, motion by Ms. Oden, seconded by Ms. Timmons. I don't see any hands for discussion, so I think we can proceed right to the roll. Okay. On the uh, motion to approve the consent agenda, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Thank you. Um, do we have any communications outside of the consent agenda? Uh, seeing no hands, uh, let's move right along to the public question comment period, limited to items on this agenda. I know um, I saw a name, but I got to pick it up. Uh, did you have something related to items on this agenda, ma'am? Um, yes. Okay, please come down. Uh, state, state your name and address, uh, and then uh, please share your thoughts with us. Good evening. Um, my name is Sue Judici, um, 8 Mahogany Drive here in Nashua. Um, I, I, I want to speak to the outgoing members of the Board of Ed, if that's okay. I want to make a comment sure. about them. First of all, to the two students, um, since I have no life, I watch every meeting, I watch every committee meeting, and I'm totally impressed. Being a teacher for over 40 years, it, you know, it does my heart well to see, you know, how kids, how you guys can come up here and really be so professional, and um, great job. Um, secondly, Mr. Mosier, um, being here as long as you have, I've really appreciated many times your comments, and um, good luck to you, and, um, I'm wishing you good health. Uh, to Sue Porter, it's great to have a teacher, retired teacher on here. You know a lot of the intricacies and the workings and things, and you are going to be missed. Okay, um, the next two are Doris and Howard. I appreciate you guys. I know that sometimes the committee meeting, uh, the Board of Ed meetings have been contentious, um, and it's not always you that start it. So I want you to know that um, many times I watch it and I'm like, I think sometimes you get a bad rap. Um, I like your attention to detail. Both of you are always prepared. You're not afraid to ask questions. And I know sometimes that bothers people. Um, but, and I'm not saying I always agree with you, but I, I really appreciate the work that you've done um, for the um, National School District. And my main reason to come here is because of Elizabeth. I have watched you over the years. I am always pleased to see that you ask the types of questions that I ask. And you are truly concerned about the academics of the students. And many times you're not willing to always jump on the next educational bandwagon that comes down the road. Um, and you are really, really concerned with the academics, and we need to push forward with that. So I so appreciate, I have been in a couple of meetings with you, a couple of committees, and um, I've always appreciated the work that you do. So best of luck, and I, you know, I hope that whatever you do next, that you enjoy it. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to, I appreciate the work that you all put into this, because it's, it's night and day. And um, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Judici. You're welcome. Was there anyone else who wanted to make a public comment who didn't get a chance to sign up? Okay, seeing none, we'll move right along to the superintendent's comments. Dr. Mosley. Well, um, a couple things. You know, one of the things that I was not planning on talking about, but I should talk about, um, is definitely we're not we're in year in three days into snow days and unfortunately um, you know we we had to to use those and mother nature is always 
Um, you just can't predict that. Now, with that said, uh, the best way I've said before is that I try to make the call as early as possible to give uh, parents and teachers a heads up uh, so they can plan accordingly for travel and for daycare. Uh, so uh, the best place to go is to the social media. That's where you'll first get an online response, I mean, an online notification followed by a one call. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, we have kids who are on the swimming team that have to leave their homes at about four o'clock, that's a.m. And so they're, the sooner the call can make, I can make the call or I can get in contact with the DPW um, and our weather individuals, the better. So we're in the snow season now and you know it, we're not gonna get out of it until uh, April, that's the truth. Last time, two years ago, we had a snow day, I think in mid-March. A couple things in terms of new employees, I just, this is FYI, we hired a grant writer. Her name is Pamela uh, Davis, or Davy, excuse me. And just understand for the board that this is a split position. We, she spends half of her time with the city and then half her time with us. So the, this, this week was her first week with both the city and with us. We're very, very excited to have her uh, be a part of our team. Like anything, people were just jumping to ask her to write 150 grants at the, on the city level, and I think we were at 175. Um, I know it's a, a large number, I'm just kind of being facetious, but there's just so many grants out there that we are very excited to have her part of our team. And so um, we'll talk more about grants when they become more prevalent at the city and at the school level, but I just felt that to notify the board of our new hire of the grant writer. So she's, we're very excited to have her part of our team and working collaboratively with the city. I'd like to just take an opportunity to thank uh, Garth and Donna for our December 11th Professional Development Day. I, it was well attended. We had many, many great workshops to give the board an idea of some of the workshops. We had math and reading for interventionists. We have Title I. Um, some of the things that are on our strategic plan, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we had ch uh, children with anxiety-related oppositional behavior. Uh, we had a great presenter, Jessica Manahan came down. We had a, another uh, presentation on trauma therapeutic techniques, uh, library media. We saw today a little bit about the webmaster for, new, for the new website. Uh, we had some training for paraprofessionals. We had managing trauma in the classroom, reading comprehension for paras. Uh, so that was a, a very nice, nice event for um, our, our faculty. Um, I, I attended the, um, the one in, at the South with Jessica Manningham. I thought it was phenomenal uh, advice that she gave our teachers, but I also felt as a dad that I could take some of those uh, strategies at home as well. A couple of other things, uh, we had project uh, search, some of our kids are in project search at the hospital and they had a beautiful art show on November 9th. Uh, there was also a presentation at the mayor's office of our kids who received recycling awards for their participation in recycling projects throughout the entire city. Uh, now November 21st, uh, we had the YMCA gave an uh, facilitated event, talked very favorably and positively about the Power Scholar Summer Program. It may seem like the summer is you know, so far away, but believe it or not, we're gearing up to get ready for the Power Scholar Programs and to get those applications out now. So there's no reason for any of our kids not to have something to do, our elementary and middle school kids to do something in the summertime. So uh, Power Scholars, you'll hear more about it. Um, Donna Fitzpatrick, the middle school principals and elementary school principals will have that information uh, for all families coming out early, I would say sometime next month, but we know it's in the spring, but we got to get people enrolled in membership. And we have to order materials accordingly. Finally, um, tomorrow, the next two days, our administrative team, what we typically do is go out to all of the schools. Um, just to say hello to people and say wish them a nice and safe holiday understand that it's going to be two weeks. So we're going to start that, I say call it not the tour, but I will be definitely going to all of the buildings and saying hello to all the kids and families and, and administrators and teachers and paras and whoever is there. So with that said, I just want to wish everyone a nice and safe holiday, spend some time with the family, just power down, read a book, have lunch and dinner together at the, at the dinner table without a device. 
and um, you know, talk and um, enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mosley. Do we have any um, board member response to the superintendent this evening? Uh, looking around, Mr. Moser? Yes. Did you want to respond to Dr. Mosley's comments? Uh, not in particular, no. Okay, thank you. I was uh, drifting back onto some of the other uh, things that uh, we have been involved in over the years, and I'll talk to them later, about them later. Okay. But thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moser. All right, uh, student member of the board comments. Uh, Ms. Scales or Ms. Ede? Mr. Ede? Ms. Scales? Um, first, for Nashville High School North, the Board of Education Student Representative, elections are tomorrow on Thursday, December 19th. Um, seniors sign up for Senior Night Live and B138, the Activities Coordinator's Office. Um, the sign-up deadline is Friday, December 20th, and auditions are January 8th or 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, tomorrow night from 6 to 8 is the seniors only PJ Holiday Karaoke Night um, in T-Stop, free admission. Um, the Nashville High School North Drama Club is having auditions for Hamlet by William Shakespeare. The audition dates are January 14th and 15th of the new year. Actors need to prepare Shakespeare monologue or soliloquy. And then please obtain a rehearsal packet from Ms. Freeman and D323 or Ms. Millett and B319. There are 23 speaking roles, non-gender specific casting. Um, the Student Voice Summit was on December 10th, hosted by National High School North this year. It went very well. Um, the NCCRJ Summit at National High School North was December 4th. Um, we talked about how a lot of students don't know or don't realize or aren't notified when their license has been suspended and being pulled over by the police because of it. Um, the police don't have anything to do with if their license is suspended. So, um, Ms. Gales, I'm sorry, Ms. Gales, could you tell us what the NCC? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, NCCRD stands for Nashua Community Conversation on Race and Justice. Okay, and that's with the Nashua Police Department? Yes, it's with um, the Nashua Police Department and students. Okay, so they have like a roundtable conversation? Um, yes, so okay. um, this year we had six groups and there are a lot of children, so that's awesome. A bigger turnout than we had last year. Um, there's also one at South, but um, George will talk about that. And yeah, so you talk about issues within the community and um, how to resolve them. Great. Hopefully. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break your train of thought. I just wanted to make sure we all understood what we were talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then the Southern New Hampshire Outreach for Black Unities annual Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast will be held January 20th. And... I have also prepared a little farewell statement. Oh, okay. Oh, if I can find the right page. Thank you. Um, so I never really shared about how I got on the Board of Education. And um, it was a unique experience because I, had it in, I didn't know about it until the day application for due. And I handed it in the same day application would do as soon as the last bell rang for school to let out. So um, December 12th, 2018, after the e-block announcements were vocalized over the intercom, a light went off in my head and I sporadically jumped out of my seat, asked the teacher to leave class immediately, ran to the activities coordinator, and swiped the multi-page application off her desk, which read, National North Board of Education Applications. All applications due by December 12th, 2018, no exceptions. Knowing I needed to do this, I ran to my academy office, called my parents, asked them to come back to school to sign my form, tracked down my assistant principal, the principal and a staff member to sign my form, and handed the application in as soon as the school day ended. December 19th, 2018, it was election day. I said my speech over the intercom, along with other candidates during e-block. Lunchtime came and the student body voted for their student representative, which was soon to be me, Jamila Ashanti Scales. This particular event was of paramount importance because before I had ran for president of my class three times and lost each time. I was also not doing well in my classes. I was getting into a little trouble at the time with my administrators. And mostly I felt as if I had no purpose and if I had nothing to offer the world. Because it was my junior year of high school, there was still no consistency. 
in my life, I didn't know what I wanted to be or do, and I was oblivious to the gifts in which I possess. Once I was elected as the Board of Education Student Representative, I realized that a great leader needs to know how to follow just as well as they can lead. Exactly how, exactly how you have to learn to walk before you can run. Being a voice for my school gave me the little nudge I needed at the time to realize my purpose and the gifts in which I possess, as well as a boost of confidence. It equipped me with the ability to lead better with more experience in problem solving and executing decisions that would best improve the community, school, and student achievement. Since then, I've become the first elected African-American Board of Education Student Representative in New Hampshire's history, inspired three other African-American young ladies, students from Manchester, New Hampshire, to continue to fight for student representation on the Manchester BOE. I was elected as the honorable youth speaker at both New Hampshire's annual MLK breakfast and Black History Month celebration, received a letter of, rec of accommodation from Governor Christopher T. Sununu, entered for the mayor of Nashville, New Hampshire, became president of the National North Democrats chapter, was elected as the National, the National High School Democrats of America HSDA Black Caucus <laughs> Chair, and was accepted into the accepted into and attended the American University School of International Service Community of Scholars program and earned three college credits and served as chief of staff. While occupying this honorable position as the Board of Education student representative, I have learned to self-reflect, take responsibility, be steadfast and confident. That, is, that it is okay to be unconventional or eccentric when everyone else thinks you should conform to be loud and proud without diminishing the voices of others. But most of all, to not just hear, but listen, and to be silent. Occupying the position of the Board of Education Student Representative has instigated a period of personal growth and development in my life. Granted me with a new understanding of myself and those around me, I realize now the extensiveness of my capabilities, and I cannot wait to share them with the rest of the world. To the students who will adopt the Board of Education Student Representative position, this job comes with a massive amount of influence and responsibility. Use it wisely. Don't take it for granted. Stay humble. Be teachable. And if someone comes to you with a concern, don't be ignorant. Acknowledge their concern. I only say this because I've been noticing recently that behavior more often with student leaders at my school. And being in this position, you will learn so much from management, business, and being in a work environment, creating and debating policies to figuring out and being passionate about what's important to you. But remember, you are a student representative. This job is not about you. It is about servitude, serving your peers, being a voice for them, and how this board can better improve our education. Before I, get, before I give the microphone up, I'd just like to say thank you to those on the board who have provided guidance and knowledge. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Gloria. You are an outstanding liais liaison and an awesome teacher. Thank you, George, for encouraging me, being a friend, and always challenging me to think differently, especially if I didn't agree with you. <laughs> I've seen you grow in confidence, maturity, and accomplish so much more since, the first, since I first met you last year, and it's been an honor to serve with you. But lastly, but certainly not least, thank you to the National North student body who put their trust in me and elected me as their student rep. It has been an honor serving all of you. Thank you and farewell. Thank you, Ms. Scales. I'll try to, I'll try to follow that up. Um, I'll start with some of the recent events at South. Uh, yeah, so there was a NCCRJ summit at South also on December 11th. And I heard it went very well. Um, as Jamila Shanti said, Shanti said, there was a student voice summit on the 10th at North. And our elections for the Board of Ed student rep are also tomorrow. And uh, also, there's a food drive going on for non-perishable food items at South until uh, December 16th. And in yearbooks, there are 62 yearbooks remaining as of November 25th, and they're $100 until, until December 31st, and those can be bought online. I first want to say thank you to, specifically to Mrs. Timmons and to Jamila Shanti Scales. You guys made it really, um, you guys really helped welcome me to the, uh, and smoothen, smoothen my transition to the board. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, I also want to say thank you to the whole board for the experience and the privilege to be able to represent the national students of National High School South. It's been a whole year and it's gone by really quickly. It feels like just yesterday I walked in in January not really knowing what's going on. But I've learned a lot about local government. Um, there's so much, I'm really amazed that there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that not a lot of people see, all for that end goal of 
providing quality public education. Um, and I was really surprised, above all, about how much the board values student input. And like, it's not, it's not just paid lips, like, the student interests aren't just paid lip service to. They're actually considered and even acted upon. Because um, at the end of the day, it's all about educating the future. So thank you again very much. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ede. Uh, we wish you both the best of luck um, on the last half of your senior year um, and with whatever you choose to do once you leave here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did it? Okay. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Committee on Finance and Operations. Uh, Ms. Odin? I'm sorry, I skipped over budget because I don't believe we have any budget updates. So. So, oh, Ms. Odin. Okay. Um, the first uh, motion here is to recommend to approve the Make-A-Wish donation to the Nashville High School South weight room uh, renovation. And if I can get a second, I would like to speak to that. Second. second. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a former student, and Ms. Jingris came to the... Um, committee meeting to speak to this, and I would like to read her statement. The night before the NHIAA wrestling meet of champions this past February, Nathaniel Tejada, a 12-season Nashua South senior student athlete, noticed a bump about the size of a ping pong ball on his neck. The next morning, Smiley, a nickname since fifth grade, took to the mat to compete in the most prestigious New Hampshire wrestling event. The next day, Smiley went to the doctor about the lump. He then was at Mass General for further testing, and it was determined on February 28, 2019, that Smiley had stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma. Smiley began chemo to battle his cancer soon thereafter. A senior in high school, a football player, baseball player, and wrestler with a positive attitude and smile on his face was about to fight for his life. And he did it all with a smile on his face. He underwent four months of chemo and two months of radiation. Through it all, he remained part of the baseball program, attended most of the normal senior activities, was named prom king, and most importantly, graduated with his class. I am happy to say that Smiley is doing very well. On October 11th of this year, he was told he was in remission. He is a freshman at Springfield College and working hard on their wrestling team. When con contacted by the Make-A-Wish Foundation about what he might want, he immediately asked to have his high school weight room redone and updated. Over his four years at South, Smiley had spent countless hours in that room with his three teams and numerous teammates he wanted to give back. So quite a young man we have here. Um, uh, the the Make-A-Wish uh, representative who is working on Smiley's wish uh, is uh, Dr. Ann Vermette and uh, working with Linda Pearson. They will be working over Christmas vacation uh, to renovate the weight room. Uh, Ms. Dr. Vermette said to me he could have asked for a car, a trip, and this is what he wanted to do. Uh, there was a little bit of glitch where um, they weren't sure the, uh, they had volunteers for the weight room to paint it, and um, that couldn't be done because of the con union contract. So they were afraid it wasn't going to get done. But thanks to um, Donna Grady, uh, who is head custodian at South and president of the union there, the room, I believe, was finished today, Mr. Donovan? Was I, it, I believe that was the plan, yes. That was the plan to finish it. So when uh, the students come back to use that weight room, 
thanks to Smiley, they will and the Make a Wish Foundation, they will have a, a brand new room there. So they will be working on that over uh, the holidays. And uh, we wish, we thank Smiley for his donation and all the volunteers, and we wish him the best of luck in his uh, his recuperation and his fight with the lymphoma. So. I'm looking for, I know, that's tough. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Odin. Do we have any um, discussion? No? I don't see any. Um, I, I just have a statement, and I just want to thank um, Smiley and Make-A-Wish. This is an amazing gift, um, and I am very grateful and moved. Um, I also wanted to thank um, Ms. Grady and the Custodial Union for changing their schedules and uh, making the painting happen this week so that Make-A-Wish can get in there next week. Um, I, I appreciate them um, being willing to do that for this, this student and all of the other students who will be able to use it. So, um, If no one else has anything, I think we're ready for the roll. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. <coughs> they... Um... Just so everybody knows, uh, it's kind of a complete renovation, a lot of new equipment, a lot of, uh, you know, maintaining what could be maintained. So everything is being repurposed. And one thing I really appreciated it, it, when they spoke to the committee was that they made the point that everything is going to be installed by professionals. Okay, which I felt was... I, that really, to me, meant a lot. When you have weight machines and they could have a couple hundred pounds on there, you want to know that they're... I imagine they secure them to the floors. I doubt they move them around too much. But just so everybody would know that, I just wanted to share that. So to me, that was a very kind gesture on the stu student's part and, and, and well done by the Make-A-Wish. And I guess there were two other vendors. Um, maybe Mrs. Oden, do you remember who they are? Um, the folks that provided the actual uh, equipment. Uh, we want to thank them for their generous contributions along with the Make-A-Wish people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Can we name the gym after him? I don't know. That's something that we certainly could discuss at another time. There's a policy on that, on uh, naming the building, yeah. so we'd have check to, it out. Well, just the gym, not a the, building. The gym has no, been just named. That, this would be the weight room. Just the weight room. I was just thinking the weight yeah, room. So yeah. I think we'd have just to do a little research, but um, I appreciate the suggestion um, and also the reminder about um, the safety and... Um, the companies that are donating the equipment as well. That's wonderful. Uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick? I just wanted to let you know when uh, Lisa Jingris and I first discussed this, um, she did mention that people were wondering if they could call the weight room Smiley's room. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's been discussed yeah. just between us. I think it's a, I think it's a great idea, but um, let's research the policy and make sure we don't um, inadvertently break one of our own policies. So. Okay. Having said that, uh, Mr. Gorino. Hey, on the motion, um, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Gorino votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are not going to act on the next item as uh, administration is looking for uh, an alternative funding for the project. Okay. Um, the next one is rec I move to rec to approve the electricity contract with Direct Energy for two years, coming from account nine one point one point two 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 six two one dash five four one zero zero. Second. Okay. Um, it is, we could have had a one-year contract or a two-year contract, and it was a better price for us to have a two-year contract. Uh, Mr. Smith, do you just want to speak to the, uh, the cost of the kilowatt? I, it changed very little, but it did change. Thank you. I wondered where you were going, Mr. Smith. Huh? 
Good evening. Uh, just to recap, uh, our electrical provider was Agera Energy. We went filed for bankruptcy. They informed us on the 1st of November they're doing so. Said we had 36 to 60 days before we'd go to the default Eversource rate, uh, which was significantly more than what we're currently paying. Uh, which uh, with a gear was uh, 0 0.069 kil dollars per kilowatt hour. So uh, we went out to two vendors we've been dealing with in the past, uh, Direct Energy and Constellation. Direct Energy is the company we're currently doing our natural gas purchasing from. Constellation is the electrical company or electrical service company that's providing electricity for the rest of the city. Um, but we have, we've used them in the past, so we felt comfortable going to both of them. Uh, we've had the uh, pricing refreshed a couple times when they give you a quote, because this is based on stock market and futures and everything else, so if you wait two days, then it, it can change significantly. Um, so I had them update these uh, figures today, and um, I, I agree going with a two-year uh, contract is, is the best value. It's uh, 0 0.06845. Again, that's 0 0.069 is what we're currently paying, so this is a little bit less. Um, just uh, by contrast, uh, Constellation gave us a price of, uh, for two years, of uh, 0 0.0768. So direct energy was obviously the cheaper of the two. And we've had a very good and very long relationship with direct energy. Um, so I feel comfortable in recommending them. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, any questions? Uh, Mr. Kaufman? Just a, a question. Should the motion include the rate or include at least the quote as per the December? So, Mrs. Oden, I think we may want to modify the motion to include the, uh, the, 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 the contract rate uh, of the memo dated December 18th and the rate being uh, 0 0.06845. Do we have a contract for this, Sean? We're signing a contract? Yes, uh, as soon as you approve it, I was going to give it to Mr. Donovan. To... Okay. Mr. Donovan, do we usually put a rate like that in? Uh, I would in this case. It's sort of like putting the price in a contract if you have it. So, so you would put it. Also, it shows acknowledgement okay. to the vendor, okay. yep. so, I think, which is what you need to do. Ms. Oden, would you prefer to do uh, to revise your original motion, or would you prefer um, for Mr. Kaufman's suggestion to be a motion? Um, I would second Mr. Kaufman if we go that way. Otherwise, I don't. It, do, it doesn't matter one way or the other to me. Okay. Whatever. For efficiency's sake, let's call it a friendly amendment, and, and just let's repeat. I'm going to repeat what it should say, yes? Okay, yes. So um, the motion is to approve the electricity contract with direct energy for 24 months at a rate of, make sure I get it right, $0.06845, uh, dollars, um, and that will be out of a That cents per kilowatt? Dollars per kilowatt. Dollars, dollar. dollars per kilowatt. No, it's cents yeah. per kilowatt. Yeah, 0.068 dollars. So 68. So, so, oh, so seven cents. Six cents. Okay. 0.845 cents. Cents, not dollars. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start over. <laughs> the motion is to approve the electricity contract with direct energy for 24 months at a rate of 6.845 cents per kilowatt hour from account... 91.1.222621541000. Can, can I just add, you might want to add into that the two years? Yeah. Yes, it's a two that. year. Oh, yeah. should, I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay. Good. Okay, and that was seconded by, still seconded by Ms. Porter? Sure. Okay. Excellent. Any other? Okay, I don't see any other hands, so Mr. Guarino. Okay, on the motion, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. 
Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries, eight to zero. Nine to zero. Oh, yes, nine of us are here this evening. Sorry, I say eight, nine. I'm sorry, nine to zero. Move to approve the Deferred Maintenance and Capital Improvement Plan as presented by Mr. Smith per memo dated December 5th, 2019. Second. Uh, it was a very realistic Deferred Maintenance and Capital Improvement Plan that uh, showed our real needs in the district. So I want to thank him for the work that he put into that and for um, not glossing over some needs that we have. So thank you so much. It was very detailed and it was, I thought it was uh, very realistic. Mr. Kaufman? Yeah, uh, I want to second that. Um, the, uh, we have about, what is it, 600000 a year we put into that budget, Mr. Donovan? Yeah. Th that has been the request for the last few years. Right, well, that's what we, oh, that's the request. What do we actually put in it? I'm sorry. Uh, 100, 200, and I think one year we get 300, but let's say an average of 200. Okay, so when you look at that list that Mr. Smith provided to the board, or to the committee, the finance committee, it averages, and Sean, Mr. Smith, please correct me, but somewhere around $1.3 million for the next six or seven years, I think? Correct. Okay, so the $100,000 that the board puts in the account is way too, way too inadequate for really the reality needs. So mm -hmm. I would like to make a suggestion to you, um, Ms. Raymond, or for the next board chair anyway, that Mr. Smith come to the board and make that presentation that he gave to the committee and that it be done prior or at least in conjunction with the budget because um, it's a sobering, sobering thing, and it puts things in a perspective. Having been on the board four years, I mean, I've seen that, but it, it was never in the perspective where I now can further appreciate what it, what it means to the district. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Guarino? Uh, my question is, uh, this is a capital improvement plan, and it's part of the... City's capital improvement plan, is that correct, Mr. Smith? Uh, pretty much. I mean, it's a deferred maintenance plan. We put in a single number for deferred maintenance, but then we list of all our other major projects. Right, so that actually doesn't come out of our operating budget. It's really, that's, that's a separate money that's coming from the, from the city, is that correct? Well, it, it's part of the total city operating budget. Right. But it's not in the budget that this board approves. Right. So. Basically, our capital, uh, our our capital improvement plan is what, what did you say? One point three million you had total. That's what we asked the city for. So it really doesn't have anything to do with the budget process, right? It, it's really the, the the capital improvement plan of the city, and and it's something they would give us beyond the beyond our regular budget. Am I correct? Or? I believe so. I'm right. not sure about the finances, who, who pays right. for what. But we, right. we go to the uh, Capital Improvement Committee in the latter part of January, right. and we make this presentation to them. Right. It so includes it's, both of the deferred maintenance and the regular right. capital projects. Right. So it's really not in our, our budget. Um, in fact, if you go to the city and you ask for the capital improvement plan, you'll see these projects in there. You won't see our budget in there, but you'll see all these separate. So it's really separate money, not part of the budget. Well, can I ask Mr. Donovan a question? Oh, oh. Do, do you have your question answered sufficiently, Mr. Guarino? I believe so. Okay, go ahead. But the board could contribute to that. To this this hundred thousand dollars. Well, a way to contribute to it would be to increase Mr. Smith's budget. Mm -hmm. So you could, some of the items in here, you know, they're $50,000 or so. He, you could put that money in the operating budget and he could then do more of the projects. 
the significant ones, let's say 500,000 or so, probably wouldn't done, be done through the operating budget. Okay, so the point- There's flexibility on Thank it. you, so the point I was trying to make there, there are things the board can do to influence that amount directly into the line item for plant operations. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. I, I tend to agree with Mr. Kaufman to a point that I think that um, Mr. Smith's budget has been underfunded um, for a long time. <laughs> and I think when you underfund um, maintenance projects and you defer them down the road, they become more costly over time. I think any, any homeowner could tell you that. So um, I, I would um, appreciate um, during this budget cycle um, hearing from everybody, just like we did last time, um, about what the, what the needs are so that the board come February, March, um, can try to do our best job at meeting everybody's needs. So, uh, any other discussion? No, I think we're ready for the roll. Okay, on the motion, uh, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Uh, yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Reno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Ms. Odin? <coughs> okay, thank you saying. very much. Uh, Mr. Gorino, I understand that there was not a policy um, meeting this month, um, but Ms. Quintanella has asked that we um, talk about um, changing our numbered policies to the uh, appropriate letter. Um, so for the new website rollout. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to make a motion if, if sure. you're comfortable with that. Sure. Um, so I'd like to move that um, the board give permission uh, to administration to redesignate the 65 numbered policies to follow the uh, NHSBA um, model lettered guidelines. Um, I'll second it. Okay, and to speak to that, um, this is motion would only allow the policy coding and the the number would just change to a letter. There would be no other changes to the policies. They would still need to be reviewed um, by the policy committee in the upcoming year to make sure that they're up to date. Um, discussion? I, Ms. Van Twyver, you look like you had your hand. Yeah. No? Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'll would, be gone. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? No? Okay. On the motion, uh, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? No. Uh, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? No. Uh, Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. I have um, seven yeses and two noes. Motion carries. Thank you. And did you have anything for policy? Sorry to jump in there. No, no problem. No, not 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 now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Grino. Ms. Hohensey. Uh, two quick things. I didn't vote for this because I think we should have a list, at least of the policies that were changed. I, the concept is good, but the disclosure wasn't good for me or the public. Um, second, are we going to reschedule the last policy meeting that was snowed out? to cover bullying as it was scheduled for December 3rd, as I've had constituents asking about that follow-up. Yep. I don't believe that there um, was time in our evening schedules to fit another meeting in. Um, well, I'm in a January, is that? Certainly in January, whoever is the policy chair will get the cue um, of, of what the plans were, um, and then that policy chair will work with Ms. Fitzpatrick to create their agenda. Okay, because there were constituents that were asking mm -hmm. when that would come up. They thought it would be coming up tonight, and I pointed out that we didn't have the discussion first. Yep. No, the there's, I certainly thought that we would pass on the queue mm -hmm. to the next policy chair, as we have in past years. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions about that? Uh, Mrs. Patrick? I was just going to say there's a hold for January 22nd for the next policy meeting. Yep. Okay. January 22nd, Ms. Hohensey. Thank you. Okay. 
uh, pause the, sorry, Committee on Curriculum and Evaluation. Well, thank you. All right, our first recommendation, um, I, m motion, is to approve the revised course additions and changes for the high school program of studies for the 2020-2021 school year. Second. And um, just to speak to that, we had a uh, fairly robust conversation about this, and I thank all of the uh, people who came to speak to this and their areas of expertise. It was um, quite informative, and I thank you for arranging that. I think it was you, Ms. Fitzpatrick, arranged, or Dr. McKinney, but yeah. Okay, well, it was great, thank you. Okay, uh, any questions or comments regarding um, the revised course additions and changes. All right, seeing none, Mr. Guarino. On the motion, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Guarino votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Nine. All right, very good. I guess um, nine. We, get, we still have nine. Uh, Ms. Timmons stepped out for oh, a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. This time I counted correctly. No, you. <laughs> I, I was right Johnny on the spot too with that. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Okay, the second, um, I move to approve the payment of $34,776 to McGraw-Hill for middle school social studies subscriptions, grades seven and eight, to be funded by Title IV-A grants. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this motion? No, nope, I want to. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moser. All right, uh, Mr. Guarino. Uh, on the motion, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. DeMosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Okay, and our final um, motion is to approve the payment of $24,000 to the New Hampshire Learning Initiative, NHLI, for middle school competency-based education work over the next two years to be funded by Title IV-A grants. Second. Okay. Did you wish to speak to it at all? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Ms. Hohensey. Thank you. My understanding was the previous board um, had asked before you joined that the administration follow up and provide um, report to the board about the success or how, how this competency-based education has improved learning in the high school before we invested in it in the middle school. And I understand this is a grant, so it's not money directly out of our operating budget. So I understand you, you they want to use it, but I think the board is short cutting, um, shorting themselves on getting a report to see how it was working in the high school. Um, because we got reports on the first year or two, and there were some issues. I mean, we had a drop of 20 to 25 percent of A's. I don't know if that's changed, but in, in some sense, we're making it more difficult for our, our high school seniors to get into college. If they have lower grades, I mean, if they're still doing the same good work, and the, the complaint was at the time, and I don't know if it's been remedied, but um, not all courses or teachers offer that exceptional work that gets you above competency level to get the E level or the A plus level or whatever. So there were some things to be ironed out, and I just think that as a board, you'd want to follow up on that, and it's what the previous board had recommended before you joined. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hohensey. Um, if I recall, um, both high schools' uh, NEASC reports uh, specifically discussed competency-based grading. Is that correct, Dr. Mosley? They did. I don't have it in front of me, and I, and I wish I did, but they were very complimentary of the competency-based grading. Um, so I can certainly get that information if the board would choose. We have it. I could pull it out of the box that I have it in. Um, uh, Oh, no, I just, I just, um, yeah, I mean, it's something that I, I believe we recommended are for doing, but I can, I don't want to speak out of turn until I have that information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Oden? Yes, on the material they brought, there were two courses that 
uh, it struck me strange. Retri retire course French one uh, continued, and retire course French two continued, and I didn't understand what that was. And what they said, there were students in French one and French two who really weren't ready to go on to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of competency-based education, they are now in a position where they are ready. Competency-based education has allowed them the extra time and help to go back. And, and so they are discontinuing the continued French 1 and French 2. Am I right, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes, based on the competency um, grading, if a student has not shown competency, then they continue until they do, which means they really have to master the material before they can go forward. So no more French one and a half. Right. Okay. So that's been a plus. For, that's because of competency-based education that they could re retire those courses. Interesting. All right. Anyone else? Um, I don't see anybody else. So Mr. Gorino. Okay. Um, on the motion, um, okay. Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Coffin stepped out. Ms. Mosher? Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? No. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. I have one no, and I have um, six, seven. Seven yeses. Seven one. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Guarino. Right. Anything else, Ms. Porter? No, nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to say to you how much I enjoyed, uh, and Dr. McKinney as well, how much I enjoyed the curriculum committee um, this past year, especially your spotlight on student success spotlight, thank you. Um, every month. And I, um, have, I encourage whomever becomes the curriculum chair to, to continue that practice. And thank you to um, Dr. McKinney for arranging, because it's just, it's really the highlight, I think, of um, a lot of things we do. So thank you. Okay. Committee on Human Resources. Yes. Uh, Ms. Timmons. I move to suspend the rules as Human Resource Committee met today at 630. Second. Second. On the motion uh, to suspend the rules, Ms. Oden. Yes. Uh, Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Okay. okay. I move to accept the revised copy of the uh, personnel recommendation that was given to you tonight, dated um, Wednesday, December 18, 2019. Second. Second. Okay. Sorry. No. Nope. <laughs> any discussion? I don't see or hear anybody. Um, so whenever you're ready, Mr. Guarino. On the motion to approve the revised at revised uh, personnel recommendation, uh, Ms. Oden. Yes. Ms. Raymond. Yes. Mr. Mosher. Yes. Ms. Van Twyver. Yes. Mr. Reno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Okay. Do you have anything else for us this evening, Ms. Timmons? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, any liaison reports this evening? No. Nope? Okay. Uh, so unfinished business. Uh, Ms. Porter, you had asked for an update regarding the strategic plan task forces. Yes. So um, as... Dr. Mosley stated before, we've spent um, many, many, many hours of quality time together to come up with this plan, of which I am extremely proud. Um, and I have um, very high hopes for its success over the next um, several years. Um, and I, I was just asking for an update on the task force and committees, the status of those, because 
Um, I think that these form the heart of the strategic plan, and I think there's a lot of power and potential in these um, plans. So um, and, and just to give you a chance to brag, I guess, and to just see um, how these are going, I know that I had forwarded through um, Mrs. Raymond to you a uh, little kind of a sheet that I had made. Um, so I'm, I'm just hopeful for the new board members coming on. Um, it's, a, it's a big plan, um, even for members who are on the um, board right now. Um, excuse me. It's a lot to digest. <laughs> and so I, I made a little cheat sheet that I think I, I, I think Mrs. Raymond passed on to you. Mm -hmm. So what it is is it's just a, um, a little... Um, thumbnail sketch of each of the committees because we have um, building-based instructional leadership teams. So that would be one at each school. There's a district-wide social-emotional learning task force. Um, there's a district-wide be student behavior task force. A middle school steering committee, that's a continuation of what's happening, and the middle school alternative program task force. So I think that the purpose of these, when we were designing these, was so that there would be an ecosystem of information um, coming from those people who are working directly with students and just a way to filter that information up and down and all around. So um, Basically, is just an update to see that um, the membership is established for each of the committees that, um, I, and I'm sure there were open invitations to um, uh, staff members and community members to join those. Um, I did put a bulleted list because I know that in the strategic plan in my favorite Appendix J that I've mentioned a lot is where the descriptions of these um, different uh, committees is. So it's just like a bulleted list because sometimes, as we said, as we were working on this, it's best to hear this in different formats and in multiple times. So just so that these committees would know in their um, agendas, in their meeting minutes, the, the things that they were tasked with to address. And then um, the last thing that was on the list is just how that information from those community uh, uh, committee meetings would be shared at large. Yeah. That's a lot. It yeah, is a lot. lot. It's a, it's a so, lot, but it's all good. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. So a couple of things. I'll just add to what you said a little bit, and um, I'll just kind of give you at the bird's eye view of this, just doing a brief summary. Um, and I say brief, that was probably at about page seven. And that's brief, in addition to everything that you said. So a couple things. If you will recall um, that when we put together the plan, we also said that we were going to do like a speaking tour of that and making sure that, that the faculty and administration had an opportunity to have those face-to-face -face conversations. Very similar to what we did with the focus groups, very similar to what we did when we did the tour around getting that feedback. So what I shared with the uh, board and I'll get shared with the public is that these are a list of dates where I have personally gone out to the schools during their faculty meeting and have talked exclusively and directly with the faculty about the strategic plan. Um, what I've done, what I have done with these um, speaking events is that I've highlighted and talked about the five goals followed by the revision of the mission, talked about some of the highlights and the things that are going on in the plan and the expectations of that. But more importantly, really what these, these speaking events or engagements were really about is having a dialogue with the faculty around the strategic plan and answering any questions. So I just want to say that I've started that. I started it September 4th. The last engage, engagement I had was December 4th at Mount Pleasant, and I have not completed all of the uh, speaking engagements because we have a larger district, so I'm coming to those, uh, those schools. Um, so I just wanted to um, uh, share this with the board. The second piece of paper that I'm going to pass out to the board, it's nothing new. This isn't new information, but I just wanted to give people a sense that once I kind of talk about the committee work, 
and some of the things that uh, Ms. Porter shared, I just want the board to be aware of, and I'll just read this out loud to, to, the, fact, uh, to the public, that we have strategic plan committees and task force active and running in the district, but we also have existing ones as well. So for instance, we have uh, an ELL, e, ELA steering committee, a math steering committee, a social studies steering committee, a science steering committee, um, a elementary school uh, steering committee, a middle school steering committee, a professional development master plan committee. We have teacher development and evaluation committee. We have a para cabinet that we started this year. We also have a technology committee. I'll talk a little bit about that. We have emergency planning committee, uh, formerly known, known as the safety committee. In addition to that, our building principals also meet with our um, union reps, either it's once a month or sometimes bi-weekly. So we have all of those events taking place. Now for the instructional leadership uh, teams within the buildings, uh, just to give some highlights, and what I'm gonna talk about a little bit is about the, I call it the 50,000 view in, talk about some of the positives and also talk about some of the challenges as well. Um, uh, we've had these, these committees up and running. Uh, some of the committees have met every month. Some of them have met twice a month, depending on when the schedules permit. Uh, they've talked about SEL. They've talked about professional development in the district. They've also talked about SEL in terms of what's the appropriate uh, program for us, or whether it's, in this case, there was a lengthy discussion around Choose Love. There was a discussion around assessment. Uh, formative assessments in the district. Uh, there has been some healthy discussion around homework and homework expectations for our kids at some of these meetings at the elementary school. Uh, there's also been some support around paraprofessionals and retention. Uh, at the high school level, there's been some discussions around um, e-block, how to best use that, some discussion around discipline during these, these meetings professional development goals for the, not just the, for the building, but also district-wide. Um, what we find at the high school level, and I'll talk a little bit about the middle school as well, is that there's really a lot of these instructional time is really talking about uh, information that is shared um, at the NIAS. Uh, at the middle school, there's been some discussion around um, communication from uh, the middle schools, from the elementary schools to the middle school. There's also some communication around the middle school to the high schools. Um, and I will say that this is happening, but I'm, I'm also gonna give some areas where we can make some improvements as well. Uh, there's been some communication around PD uh, at, at our uh, high schools as well, also at our middle schools. Uh, there's been some talk, in, in particular at one of our middle schools, Penichuk, around technology. We also heard about SEL, and we also, we were most recently in our conversation around company-based grading. And really, it's a discussion at the middle school level is that there are, there are teachers at the middle school level that are interested in the competency-based grading and how that fits into their practices and how they can better implement it or explore it as well. Um, at the middle school, there was also some discussion around advisories as well. So what I did is that I, I, on page one through three here, I just highlighted, and if I go 1.1, that's the instructional leadership team, and then I'll talk about um, some other areas in the um, strategic plan. Uh, if you look at 1.7 on a strategic plan, we have the technology committee, it's part of the... Wait, wait, one second. I'm okay. just, I'm Mr. Sorry. Kaufman, you're I'm, confused about what Mr... I'm, well, first of all, the handout in the, in the packet did not match anything that Ms. Porter was talking about. Everything we had was previous dates. Everything Dr. Mosley is talking about wasn't given to us. We're not prepared to understand his points of reference or anything else. So Dr. Mosley... supposed to get things three days ahead of time. Dr. Mosley is referencing the strategic plan, which we all have, and it's on our website. Um, they did not reprint the whole strategic plan. Um, Dr. Mosley, you are getting very... Um, specific with oh. your answers, which I appreciate, but I don't know, uh, Ms. Porter, how specific were you hoping to get? I, I guess um, just to touch base on this, to just see that these committees are up and running, okay. um, that their membership is 
established or it, it could still be in the process of. I know that sometimes it takes a little while to get, um, just to make sure that um, the meeting, the, the, the things that the teams are meeting on are reflective of what was in, yeah. in their, um, the mission for each one, the, the, sure. it, the tasks all, that they were supposed to address and that they were sharing their information, I guess. It all really depends on what committee we've had. So I want to talk a little bit about the instructional leadership teams. One of the, the okay, things that, me. the good things. Oh, sorry, I was just saying oh, okay. I carried this. The good thing about this is that I, they, I are, they are actually taking place. Okay. All right, they are up, they're running, they're taking place. And the topics, though, vary from school to school. Um, membership is there. Uh, I do, we do have a sign-in sheet for people who want to be part of these instructional leadership teams. Um, so the principals have advertised that. Um, I think one of the challenges really is in terms of areas of improvement for the, for the instructional teams is really about the data. So we get all of this, this information, but in terms of organization and where we kind of fit, everyone's kind of a little bit of a singleton. So we have to make some and think about some areas where we can coordinate this a little bit better, mm -hmm. make it into a little bit better format. Um, the structure of the meetings from school to school vary. Mm -hmm. Some of them have 30 minutes, some of them take longer. So that's an area where I think we can make some improvements. Um, and I think the coordination of information, your question that you asked is where's all this being housed? Mm -hmm. And we house that on our X2 system. Um, and um, that's separate from what's on our website. And so certainly what we were looking when we were talking about how do we get this information out, but also teachers were, were concerned about, well, these are notes and notes of meetings. So how much of that information do we put out there? How much of this information do we say, these are just general conversations we're having and they don't wanna be memorialized that publicly uh, without um, having a further discussion around that. So a couple of things when we went through this process that I think we can make some improvements on, keeping, creating a structure for the uh, agenda Mm -hmm. All right, I think we can make some improvements on uh, finding one format for, believe it or not, attendance. Some of it's handwritten, some of it is not handwritten. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to, I can go from task force to task force. I can talk a little bit about some of the task force that experienced some, some challenges and some task force that are doing some pretty good work. Um, for example, our technology task force, uh, and you look in the strategic plan, under 4.4, we talked a little bit about making improvements on our website. And so you saw today a little bit of that demonstration on how we're doing that. The technology committee has met three times already. Uh, you've seen some recent requests around uh, technology. In this case, it was connected to the NIAS report around connectivity. Um, one of the things that is, that is in our, in our, uh, strategic plan has to do with our, our middle school. And so we have a lot of different things going on in our middle school. So if you look at, um, and I'm making reference to the strategic plan, so it's 2.6 to 2.7. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the middle school alternative program you mentioned and, uh, and our middle school steering committee. And they have met, um, they have met this year a, a, a couple of times, and please understand it's December. Uh, We've worked, they've worked on topics of identifying, we're talking about our middle school alternative program, identifying a profile for students who are eligible for the program, identifying environmental factors or space for those kids. That also came up during our middle school, um, you know, capital improvement plans or our middle school projects when we talked about that uh, during the JSSBC. Uh, we also talked about staffing and what staffing we would need to sufficiently uh, staff that program. The alternative school uh, is something that has been part of the middle school project. The middle school steering committee has also had some surveys for teachers regarding vision and guiding on the work, uh, accountability for credit, um, the grading system. What does that grading system feel and look like? Mm -hmm. No offense, not putting anybody out there, but we need to make not just grading uh, consistent in one building, but district-wide, mm -hmm. and that's still a challenge. That's still a challenge to do that. Um, there is some discussion with behavior, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but the behavior also ties into the behavioral committee that you, right. that we, that you made reference to. Um, so again, the, we're in our preliminary stages of this. At some point at the end of the year, I'd like to say we'd like to do an autopsy on everything, and an autopsy isn't what we're doing right. It's also autopsy of what we can improve on. 
Um, and there are areas when you start to kind of build a ship, not everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, we did get some feedback on our behavioral um, committee. Uh, th that's 2.4. Uh, there was some discussion around the survey and we struggled with that. Um, selected people got the survey. I, I don't know, I think there was a board member that mentioned that to me, I can't remember, or someone said, listen. It was uh, me. <laughs> this one. And you know, Mike um, Whitehead, um, Dan Alexander and uh, uh, Deb Riley, they're all new to the district. They don't have any direct ties to any teaching person in the district. This was something where uh, this was just an oversight. They did not recognize that the importance of making sure everything was distributed. So I went to uh, Dan, Mike, and uh, Deb had that discussion. They were just saying, oh, that's not our intent. So they made sure that that survey was available to everyone and everyone can, can participate. So Dr. Mosley, it sounds like um, you are, uh, that the task forces are up and running, that they are um, identifying growing pains and trying to um, overcome them as they go. Uh, Ms. Porter, did you have any other specific questions? No, I, I just, it's, it's a big thing to launch. Like, I think that when we wrote the plan, there was a balance between being general and specific, and I think this is the part of the implementation where you're working out the nuts and bolts wow. of it, and it's a bumpy ride. Um, and it's it's a lot to get going. So I you know I just wanted to hear about it because I think it's so exciting and important. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, you just kind of it sounds like you're recalibrating as you're going. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, Appendix J is kind of like the standard that you come back to. That these committees would kind of come back to the standard to just kind of check. And it doesn't mean that it can't be changed. It's an organic document, just to make sure because the the intent of the plan was to get everybody rowing in the same direction. So we just want to make sure that as we're getting going, you know, if somebody's over here and somebody's, we're just kind of gathering all our ducks together and, and going in the same direction because part of what was happening uh, with the instructional leadership teams is we were noticing trends among the different schools that would kind of, that would be, um, our administrators would kind of like be looking at that and see. So if we're working on pretty much the same things. That doesn't mean that each school doesn't have its own personality and its own individual Does. things, because of course they do, and we don't want to make everybody clones, but at the same time, we want to be sure that we're maintaining a focus. So I'm just excited to hear about it. Thank you, but I, I, was, I think you used the point on personalities. We're seeing some of those personalities mm -hmm. play out initially, yep. and, I, and this is new. And yep. this is something we, and, and this is something that's going to take time to grow. Mm -hmm. I would say that we're still building the boat to row in the same direction and rowing in the same direction is something that is um, new for, for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we started Dottie, um, we talked a little bit about the class rank, rank committee. Yep. That's been up and running. But, you know, you start that out and you say, oh, it's just about, it's not about class rank. It gets more, mm -hmm. it's some history involved. It starts at middle school. Um, and it starts with, and so even when we start these committees, we find that there are subcommittees within these committees. Yes. Um, and that's nothing bad, yep. but I think that's coming from the ground up. I, I, I do believe there's one thing you mentioned, Ms. Porter, and I just want to make sure that we're clear and I don't want to be misleading. You did mention the SEL committee. Mm -hmm. That has not formed yet. Okay. Um, and we need to do that. It's just that we have just not been able to get that off the ground because of the other committees. But okay. I wanted you to know and I wanted the board to know this is part of the, the growing pains and it's not to say we're not doing it. It just means that you know, we're still in that infancy stage and we'll certainly get that going um, as soon as we can. It's just like, it's, it's a prodigious undertaking to get this thing rolled out. Mm -hmm. um, the board has uh, those meetings that I have been doing and facilitating, and that's against the backdrop of some existing uh, steering committees that are already taking place in the district. But I do think it's a good idea to keep what I call checking the pulse. Yep, and so thank you. I'm just excited to hear about it, and thank you to all the people who are volunteering their time to be on these committees, <laughs> to administrators who are organizing them. Um, it, it takes a village, <laughs> and we're all going to work together for the, the best of the district. So thank you. Thank you, right, thank you Ms. Porter. Thank you, Dr. Mosley.
Um, I had a couple of questions. Did anyone else have a question or comment regarding this? Uh, Ms. Hohensee? I just really wanted to know, make sure that these um, committees and task force were posted on the website so students and parents who were interested in these topics could participate. I know the high school was interested in the class rank. That's all I'm concerned, to make sure nobody omit or doesn't come to these meetings because they aren't given enough notice. That's my concern because there's so much going on and we want the full participation. Is the intent of these initial committees to be a public meeting or to be an internal meeting? Because I, I know like our middle school steering committee is an internal meeting. I think they're internal with input from different stakeholders. So that information would be collected in different ways and would become part of that. But I think that um, a lot of these are internal committees, okay. which are reporting to the board. Most of them are internal committees. There are some exceptions to this. For example, we have a parent who's part of the class rank um, committee, but she's also works at the higher ed as well. Um, so we do have a couple of them um, that, that, are, that do have some parent participation on them. So um, certainly, but for the middle school steering committee, the middle school alternative, that would be an internal committee. Are students welcome at the class rank? Because I've heard from constituents that wanted to attend, are they? Is it open to students, those committees? Okay. Chris, and, go, and go ahead, Nate. Good, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And the students are being notified when the meetings are so they can participate. In the last meeting, you guys said that uh, you guys would let us know. And it, wait, did you let us know at the last meeting? It meeting? was announced on the intercom. Yeah. Oh. George is nodding. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe I didn't get the memo, but okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it was announced uh, for the uh, morning meeting announcements. Okay. They were announced. All right, good. Uh, Mr. Kaufman. My concern, and, and it's been a concern that I've had since the very beginning of the strategic plan process, is that these committees cut out the board. In other words, um, the board, believe it or not, regulations say the board is responsible for producing the strategic plan in conjunction with the administration. The board, this process was largely done by unelected people, except for Ms. Porter was the only board member on that larger committee. So this process is continuing by um, distributing the tasks lower and lower and lower in the organization, further removing the board from providing input. At best, the board is going to get recommendations, but have no input to the process or to suggest that that committee go and you know participate and excuse me a board member participate for example if i were around i would want to be on the technology committee i have a vested interest in that um, the way this seems to be structured I'm, I'm not sure a board future board member could do that i'm just concerned that the board is just being pushed in further and further away from the process and all you're left with is uh a recommendation, quite frankly, Ms. Porter, I think you're the only one on the board who really understands the strategic plan because you had hands on, you were part of it, you lived it, you wrote a good chunk of it, I believe. So you claim ownership and I appreciate everything you did and that conveys, but once you're gone, your knowledge goes with it, right? Unless you're gonna come back and help them or something. But uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. I'm certainly, uh, I'm certainly willing to invite Ms. Porter out of retirement to come do a tutorial at some point. I would be um, happy to do but, that. Um, I think that what, ha what I, one thing that I've noticed being on the board and being on committees is that a lot of times things come to the, you know, speaking as a board member, um, things come to us and it feels sometimes that they haven't been fully vetted or that they haven't been shared, um, if, if ideas come here, you know, we wanna make sure that the people who have to implement these ideas are part of the process, I think. So in my mind, this is just um, improving communication between the people who are um, working directly with our students and the board so that when these ideas come, people you know, who are working with our students are included in the conversation. That doesn't mean the board has no input, but let's say you know, 
something. I can't think of a specific example. So we would look and say there was a certain policy that was coming. If it had been discussed in some of these um, uh, uh, task forces and committees, and that was brought to the board, it would be already kind of vetted through different people, and the board would <coughs> participate in that conversation. So I just, I, I don't look at it as the board being cut out at all. I look at it as being a collaborative venture between the board and the people who are working with our students. So I, I guess I just see that fundamentally in a different way. Thank you, Ms. Porter. Uh, Mr. Guarino. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as far as the strategic plan goes, we, we approved it and we have it. Um, what's going on now is what I consider implementation of the plan. And any, any recommendations or any actions will come before the board because the board has to approve them. So it's not like the board is being left out. And any new members who want to know what's in the strategic plan, I believe it's online and you can read it. So the board is not being left out of the strategic plan. We, we had it presented to us, we read it, um, and we approved it. And now what is going on is the implementation. And the implementation re requires uh, stakeholders to get together and come up with some recommendations under, under these specific um, areas. And, um, and any recommendations they come with, they just can't go off and do anything on their own. They have to get it approved by the board. So the board is part of it, and, and it's up to us. The board has to do work. We have homework to do. We have to go and look and read it and, 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 um, and keep, keep track of what's going on. It's our responsibility as board members to do, do our own homework. Thank you, Mr. Gorino. I happen to carry it around in my pocketbook because I'm a nerd like that. Um, <laughs> that, that segues um, nicely into my... Uh, question. Uh, and I guess my question is, do you need anything from the board at this time to implement the strategic plan? I think it's going to come down to the budget, really, because okay. we talked about human capital, talk about some initiatives that are already listed there. So at some point, we have to talk about that. To Sue Porter's point, um, at the end of this year, we'd like some time to show you and come back with our autopsy of what worked and what did not work and areas where we had some success, but areas of growth for us as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Mosley. All right, so moving on to new business. Um, the first item is um, a discussion and a recommendation to approve the $25,000 award to Fairgrounds Middle School from Intel and Best Buy um, for new technology. Um, I, I'm looking for a motion to that effect. I'll make it if no one else wants to. Uh, I move that we approve a $25,000 award to Fairgrounds Middle School from Intel and Best Buy for new technology. I second it. Okay. Um, and I just want to say a huge thank you uh, to both Intel and Best Buy. Um, I understand that the workers at Best Buy uh, won a competition uh, that was national and we're one of 11 schools uh, nationwide who um, are receiving um, this uh, gift, um, and so huge, huge thank you um, to the workers over at Best Buy that made this happen, and Intel, of course. Any other discussion on that item? Okay, uh, Mr. Garino. On the motion, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries nine to zero. Thank you. Uh, the next item um, is regarding the Nashua Education Foundation. Um, I'd like to move to approve the Nashua Education Foundation's fall 2019 grant awards. Uh, those grants total $10,530. I will second. Okay. Um, I would like to um, give a huge thank you to the National Education Foundation, um, once again, for being so generous with our um, district, and also to um, the teachers who put in the work to apply for these grants. Um, that's above and beyond, um, and I really appreciate them taking the time to do that. Okay. Any discussion regarding these grants? Uh, hearing none, Mr. Gorino? 
On the uh, motion, uh, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries 9 to 0. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item on uh, the agenda is a memorandum of understanding regarding some safety issues that was in our confidential section of our packet. Does anyone require a non-public to discuss this, or can we go ahead and make the motion to approve the MOU? I'm crickets, so I will make the motion. Uh, I move that we approve the memorandum of understanding um, that was in our packets for this time um, regarding the safety of our students. Second. Okay. On the, uh, on the motion, Ms. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Motion carries 9 to 0. Okay, wonderful. Ms. Hohensey? I had a couple items that I had given you to put on the agenda. I was wondering if I could discuss those now. Um, I only recall one item and well we, the sign up sheet you were going to discuss that at last meeting and um, oh yes I spoke with um, Miss Quintanella about it we've been using that same sign up sheet for like six years she said I don't think so the part that concerns me it says certain comments this is for about public comments it says the board advises that all those who engage in public comment that the board in no way endorses or adopts their statements Further, that certain comments may be subject may subject the speaker to legal action, and the board in no way endorses or condones statements in defamatory of a defamatory nature. Well, they've said we don't condone it twice. We don't. They're bringing it to us. They can speak on a number of topics that we as board members can't in terms of personnel, and I think you understand that. But I just think that this is intimidating when you say sign up to to speak, and it may you know lead to legal action. It's unlikely, and I, I think that's threatening the public, and uh, it, it, you know, it infringes on their First Amendment rights to, to speak out to their elected officials about what concerns them. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hohensey. So I would like to, uh, you know, after everybody comments on it, I'd like to move to get rid of this, because the board did not approve this, and it says repeatedly, the Board of Education advises, this never came to the board, we've seen it twice, the last two months, but I don't think it's anything we approved. Okay, thank you. So, Ms. Sign-up sheet had, had been just a line piece of paper before. Okay, thank you, Ms. Van Twyver. Mr. Kaufman? Right, I was gonna say the board took no action to put that forward, so it, whoever put that there acted without uh, knowledge and consent of the board. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Garino? I was the one that put that uh, sign-up sheet out there, and I put that sign-up sheet on for two years and, and no one has said a word about it and I've actually had people sign up and I've and I've had that sheet go back to to the uh, to the office that was in this book and um, and I don't see that it uh, it's not threatened doesn't threaten anyone what it basically says is that if people say something and they and they uh, say something that they commit libel and there's lots of people that commit libel and they don't realize they're doing it um, that they are responsible and, and this district is not responsible. That's all it says. It, does, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, intimidate anyone. It doesn't threaten anyone. It just says you're responsible for your own words. That's all it says. And, and, and I've used it, uh, I've, I've had it there every meeting and no one has said a word about it. Um, sometimes we had blank sheets because it wasn't provided in here, but when it was provided in here, I used it, and no one had said anything about it until some people decided they were going to make a political football out of, out of it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Guarino. Uh, yes, Ms. Hohensey. I'd like to move that the board doesn't use this. Um, we don't sign up on that sheet. We don't have cause to read it. It gets signed. It gets brought to the president. It is something that we're unaware of. So I would like to make sure it doesn't occur, and if the board wants to take it to committee and, and discuss one that it does agree with and it votes on, that, that's another matter. But this one, I think this one's a problem. Okay. Do you have a, a motion Second. in there? Oh. A motion to eliminate this, this uh, sign-up sheet. 
In particular, the part that says certain comments may subject the speaker to legal action. That's an intimidation. I mean, of course, no matter what you say where, I mean, that could be the whole true. But when you say that, when you're about to make public comment, I think that's um, intimidating. Okay, thank you. I'll second. Okay, does anyone want to discuss this? Uh, Ms. Oden. I, I wasn't at a meeting. I was watching the tape of a meeting, and we had somebody come up from the public to speak, and they used the name of an individual that is employed by our district, and it was disparaging. And I think, I think it's appropriate to have this. I think people need to understand when they speak in public, they have to be careful. Uh, I felt very sorry for the individual, and it's hard when that happens because uh, there's always another side to the story, and you don't, whoever, whoever is the victim here doesn't have a chance to respond and is painted with a broad brush by somebody speaking at a public meeting and the, the individual, if should they mention one, is not there to defend themselves. So I won't support this. Okay, thank you. Something new, Ms. Hohensey? Yes, I believe in our orientation, and I believe um, Attorney Bolton probably did in the follow-up orientations, that there's a, a different standard. We, as the employer board, cannot say things about the, our staff in public. We cannot make disparaging remarks. But the public has a right to come to us, and there is no restriction on them from saying, I have a problem, and mention a name. It may not be favorable. It may be more um, diplomatic to just say something like a para, a teacher, without giving a name. And I think many do. But I don't think we as a board have that ability to restrict them. And I think Attorney Bolton probably affirm that in your orientation this week. Yes, you are correct. Um, the public has a right to say whatever they want. Um, but what the sign-up sheet says is, if you exercise that right, the person that you're speaking against has the right to sue you. But the board is not gonna get involved in all that. So go ahead, Mr. Kaufman. Thanks, two things. When I was clerk, this didn't exist. Okay. Number one. Number two, as written, as been displayed for two years, asserts the board made a decision, took action, which has not happened in the four years that I've been here. And my experience as the clerk who would put out that sign-up sheet didn't exist when I was clerk. Maybe we should ask Ms. Van Twyver since she had clerked several years before that. Okay, thank you for that historical knowledge. Okay. Um, anything further? No, then I think we're ready for the roll call. On the motion to eliminate the sign-up sheet that says certain comments may be subject persons to legal action. Um, Ms. Oden? No. Ms. Raymond? No. Ms. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Mosher? Mr. Ms. Mr. Mosher, are you there? Oh, that's a I shame. Think we lost Mr. Mosher. I can hear him. I think he's just out of. Mr. Mosher? We'll come back at the end. Okay, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Uh, Mr. Garino votes no. Um, Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Timmons? No. Ms. Porter? No. I have one, two, three, four, five no's, three yeses. Motion fails. Okay. Did you want to try and, did you want to try and get Mr. Mosier one last time? Mr. Mosier? Uh, on you... on Ms. Hohensey's motion to eliminate the part of the sign-up sheet where it says that certain comments could subject the commenter to legal action, um, what did you vote? Yes to eliminate or no not to eliminate that section? No, I think that uh, <clears throat> having that statement in there is a good idea because it uh, will draw somebody to think I think a little bit more about what they're going to say okay. rather than uh, leave it as a blank. Okay, so is that a yes to eliminate or a no? No, that's not going to eliminate it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mosier. Okay, motion fails one, two, three, four, five, six to three. See, Ms. Raymond, just as a 
point of order, where in board policy does this exist? It says the board, the board has never approved that statement. I, I understand, but. Um, Did you just approve it now? Uh, I imagine we might have tacitly done so, but the board simply says we don't endorse anything that people say. That's it. That's all that says. It's a little bit of legalese. Okay, fine. So thank you. Okay. Um, move. Comments. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Timmons, you had something to say? Um, we have public comments. Wait, wait. I've got she has new her business. Hand up for new rule. business. Wait, I'm s hold on. Too many people are speaking at once. Ms. Van Twyver? We have the nine o'clock rule. We want to uh, extend the meeting. Okay. So, Ms. Van Twyver, are you making a motion to extend the meeting? No. Okay. <laughs> did, did anyone wish to make a motion to extend our meeting? I'd move to extend the meeting. Second. Okay. About their rules. Well, I think it's reasonable to finish the discussion at hand. Well, I agree. Well, there's another matter okay. for you. Um, okay, um, on the motion to extend the meeting uh, 30 minutes, um, Ms. Oden? No. Ms. Raymond? No. Ms. Kaufman? Yes. Mr. Mosher? No. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes no. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Timmons? No. Ms. Porter? No. I have one, two, three, four, five, six no's and three yeses. We are not extending the meeting 30 minutes. So what are you gonna do? Move to adjourn? There's Second. no point. What about, what about the on the motion public comment? To adjourn. Wait. What about board member comment? We Mr. have another Mr. issue Kaufman, here please, for please, new business. Please stop yelling. Thank you. Not yelling. Yeah, you are. If, yeah, you oh, are. If I were yelling, you'd really know. Mr. It. Kaufman. Well, I think maybe we ought to. Uh, you know, we would have liked to have said something, you know, and, and particularly in response to the nice lady that spoke so right. highly of me. But, hey. Okay. Mr. Guarino. I move to adjourn. Second. Okay. I want to thank this on, board for being so polite. On the motion. Are we going to have a follow-up non-meeting? On the motion to adjourn? They still have to vote. Debate them. Ms. 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 Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yeah. Mr. Kaufman? On adjournment? Yes. No. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? No. Uh, Mr. Reno votes yes. Uh, Ms. Hohensey? No. Uh, Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six yeses, three noes. The motion is adjourned. Uh, the uh, meeting is adjourned at 9 10. Thank you all. Enjoy your holiday. Are we going to have an unpause? Mr. Mosher, Mr. Mosher, thank you very much for the last time. I, I want to thank you Raymond. very much.